Jerry, would you mind doing the roll? Of course, tape recorder is running. Okay, so um, this is public hearing and uh, on the application for 957 Grant Street. Jerry, would you do a roll call? Sure. Del Teague? Here. Maria Vieira? Trina McKeever? Here. Gina, Gina Barros? Stephen Chesler? Here. Aaron Drinkwater? Moisha Indig, Bozina Kaminsky, Abraham Leibovitz, Sante Maselli, Rabbi Niederman, Isaac Sofer, Robert Solano, William Vega, Here. Stephen Weidberg, Simon Weiser, Michael Here. Andrews, Keith Berger, Corey Canton, Michael Here. Kowachka, Katie oh, Naplatarski, Allison Here. Stone. We have 12 members present. Okay. So, um, why don't we get started? Well, do we have, all right, we'll have the, the presentation now. So that means I'm on? It means you're on. Okay. My name is, I'm sorry. My name is Emily Simons and I am with the law office of Emily Simons PLLC. I've been a land use lawyer for uh, some 25 years. I was with city planning for 13 years and then went out to the private sector. And um, uh, I do work in all the boroughs and uh, I do discretionary actions and, as well as you know regular people who just want to know what, what they can build. Um, tonight, we're looking at um, a vacant lot at 957 Grand Street in Brooklyn, which is basically on a, a triangular shaped lot uh, bordered by Catherine, DeVoe, Morgan, and Grand Street in the East Williamsburg uh, section of Brooklyn. It's a very small vacant lot, uh, 25 by 100. It's, it's kind of an irregular shaped lot. And um, it is in an M11 district, so it needs to go to the BSA in order to get a variance for, uh, for residential use. The applicant would like to build uh, eight units. Um, there are eight units, uh, four, it's 40 feet high, um, and, uh, the units are one bedrooms. They're about 500 square feet each. The first floor is completely handicapped accessible. Um, the neighborhood is, the neighborhood is mixed and it's changing. Um, to the south, to the basically to the west and to the north of this uh, area, it's residential, and the neighborhood is becoming more increasingly residential. Um, one of the reasons the the bordering buildings um, around uh, 957. Um, directly there's one two three four five six there's six almost identical uh four-story residential buildings with eight apartments or seven apartments um the building is really not suitable for what we know as modern modern manufacturing there's no ability to have a freight elevator. Uh, there's uh, no way to get uh, trucks in and out. Um, and it's been vacant um, since 2013. Um, and um, these are all quite buildings who are quite, that are quite old. And um, the applicant is uh, seeking the. I'm sorry, do you have a question? The applicant is seeking a variance. 
um, to uh, put in um, to put in the eight units of housing. Um, it'll be rental housing. He we spoke today. He's probably going to charge about sixteen hundred dollars a month for the uh, unit. Um, and um, the area is, as I said, becoming increasingly more residential. There are a lot of community facilities, schools, and churches. This is Brooklyn. <laughs> and um, so um, we've come to, I've come to the community board to. Um, to answer your questions and to uh, have you ask me anything more that you would like to know about the building. Again, it's 40 feet high. It's uh, about 200 square feet in total, uh, eight units. Um, there's a 30 to 40 foot square uh, rear yard as required by zoning. Um, Otherwise, it complies with zoning. Well, it complies with the uh, equivalent R6. Um, and um, it is very similar to the, uh, the line of buildings that, um, that run from um, basically the middle of Grand Street to Catherine Street, and then north um, of Grand and Catherine to DeVoe. From DeVoe to Metropolitan, you've got residential, and then um, on Powers and going uh, west, as I said, there's um, a very large multiple dwelling, um, and there's community facility use. So um, we believe that this building is appropriate for the neighborhood. Um, the rents are affordable. Um, they uh, they can. Um, I think that you know there, there's a need for housing that is not very expensive, um, and. Um, also, that is, it will be new. The, the construction will be brick and uh, concrete. Um, and uh, we just, uh, uh, I believe, uh, but of course, this is my client. I believe that this, this building is extremely appropriate for the site and is unfortunately inappropriate for. Uh, what manufacturing is today. It's just too small. People don't use 25 by 100 build, uh, foot buildings without freight elevators with no way to get in and out uh, to, um, to do modern kind of manufacturing. Uh, they need large floor plates. They need uh, they need a way to get up and down. They need a way to get in. They need loading docks. And this building is totally inadequate for that kind of use. Um, does anybody have any questions at this point? Um, yeah, I do. I just, you, you do not have uh, like maps or renderings of. What I'm the, sorry, it's a little hard to hear you. Do you have a, a map and or renderings of the proposed? Well, I don't, I'm sorry. I would have liked to have renderings. We were not asked by the BSA to have a rendering, but, um, and I was only informed, I think on Thursday, before the July 4th weekend, they said if there could be a rendering and the architect could not produce a rendering in time to, um, I have a land use map here. I don't know if, is there any way to make me bigger um, and to show the land use map? Uh, 
Yeah, people click on the stack view and they get a close up of you. It's can still kind of hard that? to see what's going on there. Yeah. I I can share Lenyu's map if you want, if that can help. Yeah, that would be great. I know that you have that. And you also have photographs of the uh, surrounding area that was uh, sent mm -hmm. in my in my package, my original package from the BSA. Um, do we do we have those photographs? Where where are they? They're in the uh, in the BSA application. There's a set of photographs of the. Uh, of the building, of uh, the surrounding buildings, yes. Um, no, that's not the building. Um, that's a large building, but the, 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 that, um, I'm sorry, I couldn't do the shares uh, in time. Um, I have, uh, I sent over today, some some photographs, which I think will give you an idea of um, this is if you, you can take this is um, that's I guess that's an oasis map. But this is um, if you can show if you can is it possible to show this is the um, the building itself. Mm -hmm. uh, Surrounding buildings. This is the uh, the the gap <laughs> where um, there is no building, and you can see the surrounding buildings are basically all of the same height and all of the same type. I also I just went on Google Maps and yeah. Street View, and to the left of those two other buildings, there's another vacant lot, and to the right of that space. But four buildings down is a whole bunch of commercial, uh, looks like commercial spaces. Yes, th there is. There's no doubt that there is some commercial. They're not man really manufacturing. They're very small commercial buildings. Uh, and well, I understand M M1 is, is it potentially be offices and light manufacturing, right? M11? Yeah. Current? Well, um, I is suppose that, that there, you know, the, the thing is, um, that prior to the um, this is not a, prior to the COVID ep epidemic, people were looking for offices, and at this point, we have uh, it's there's a lot of vacant offices, and um, the light manufacturing, even light manufacturing, needs uh, needs. Uh, Loading docks, they need to be able to get in and out easily. Um, it just is not really appropriate, even for light manufacturing. And the need for office use has greatly diminished um, in throughout the city. And we are finding there's an awful lot of vacant space. So um, residential use is probably the highest and best use for this particular building and given the surrounding buildings and the uh, the neighborhood that's to the west to the north and expanding out it's becoming much more of a um, of a residential neighborhood so um, I think that the eight apartments are appropriate for this building rather than to try and uh, put in offices that probably aren't necessary or to put in manufacturing that um, can't be well served in this particular location. Uh, so I, I drove over to the, uh, to the site. Yes. Um, during the day, I was curious to see what you know, what was, what the activity was there. Mm -hmm. And it seemed to me that it was um, a pretty busy enclave of um, light manufacturing, commercial, industrial uh, businesses. Now, 
you don't see it in, in the picture we just saw, but directly across the street from this lot, there it is. Uh, there, it, it's just, it's just, it seems to be um, a bustling uh, enclave of um, in, industrial businesses. And it is also true that the, the uh, that right adjacent to this lot, there is some residential um development um on the ground i think many of the buildings that have not all but some of the buildings even the buildings that have residential uh seem to have um a commercial you know um businesses on the ground floor not all of them um, not so it is true that there are uh several um four or five story uh residences on the block that this lot is on. So, I mean, as a, yeah, I'm but, but it seems to me that these other, but, but it just seemed to me that the businesses um, across the street and in the area were viable businesses. Now, I have no, I, I have no information about their finances, so I, I, I don't know about that, but, um, I don't, I don't either. I mean, I have a picture for dated April 3rd, 2021 and 2 doors down. There was a commercial space on the ground floor. It's, uh, uh it's vacant. Um, and has not been leased. So, um, the, um, the, the uh, it's, um. It's uh, it is it is a mixed it is mixed uh, but um, this particular building here is like a, a gap tooth and um, to put up a manufacturing building in this tiny space is uh, financially if you went through the financials. It financially, it doesn't make much sense. It doesn't, it doesn't give a large return on the, um, on the, uh, residential, but it gives a, a negative return as a manufacturing or, uh, as a manufacturing building. So, um, what, why does it give a negative return? Because they can't charge, uh, and any rent because of others of the kind of floor plates and because of what um uh, what can go in there uh, you mean it would be less than residential excuse me i'm sorry never mind, N never mind. that's okay okay um and uh i think that actually i think that a a, a similar residential building with reasonable rents um, in this area, being uh, with in this area, being adjacent to the um, growing residential population, would be a, would be a, would be a, an asset to the neighborhood rather than having a gap tooth here that. Um, is not it, it's been available, but it has not been uh there's been no interest in uh building from the ground up uh a manufacturing or an office building. So um the the building um next door to it um uh, to the um oh, so this is that's north. Uh, so I'm sorry. My uh, <laughs> uh, uh Del, I just had a, oh, sorry. a, a couple building, of comments when, when the building right yeah. to the east yeah. of it is re was done a few years ago, not uh, 955, the board approved it, uh, for a four story, and um, it is it's, it's actually quite 
quite a, 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 a handsome looking building. Um, and it was converted and fully occupied quite quickly. This building does not, it, it has four floors of residential. It does not even have a uh, commercial use in the ground floor. Um, so Rob, Rob, would you like, you wanted to say something? Just a, a, a couple of points of clarification, right? Um, one, the building to the left of this lot is a rent stabilized, um, and with the recent passage of rent laws, it would be a forever rent stabilized building. So it is technically residential, but what type of residential matters, right? So that's the residential building to the left. There's a landlord that has to abide by rent stabilized laws for the life of that building and has to provide what would be real affordable housing for long term residents. As much as the intent of your landlord would be to try and to manage at a lower and a more appropriate affordable rent, there's nothing preventing this landlord from selling or hiring the rent. So as much as the intent is there, I do want to make clarification. There's a difference between the large residential building to the left that is applying by rent stabilization laws and there's nothing that can be do about it other than amazing long-term residents that to stay in the neighborhood. Second, there's a reason why this thing is M11, right? There's a reason why you have that rezoning, that zoning attached to it. Across the street, it is a bustling commercial zone. Um, and third, I also think uh, the intention of a landlord of purchasing a, a piece of property in 2013, it isn't as, as he is the original owner since 1962, has been struggling and for 30 years trying to figure it out. To 2013 is a recent purchase. You knew what you were buying, you knew the zoning you were buying it for, you knew the use that you would probably get for it. Um, you can see across the street the type of usage. So as much as we want to be supportive to the economy, I believe that we're not in the business of profiting an individual owner. We're in the business of how to improve the community, right? So either it stays the way it is, you make that work, or you can call HPD and enter into an affordable housing program, come back here with a 100% affordable housing project, and then that... I think we'll get rave reviews from this community board. So I think to come here and say, hey, we're, we're trying to make this work, it's mostly residential, it's partially true. Um, but the only thing we would really be benefiting is the landlord, right? We would only be giving you that equity on a, on a, on a piece of property that was purchased for 350,000. So you bought a piece of property in 2013 for 350. Um, you can easily rent that out and get back a nice return back and use the current as a right as what you purchase to come here and ask for a windfall of more. Um, I don't think is appropriate request for a BCA. That's just my take. So I think, let me just say, it seems, let me just say something and then we'll move on. It seems to me um, that one of the issues we will deal with here tonight and it's something that we've been talking about for a while on this in this committee is whether we want whether we want to protect our manufacturing zoning or whether we don't care about it and or if we maybe we care about it but if there is if if something is presented to us that we clearly feel is worth giving up that manufacturing zoning on on a particular parcel then maybe we we do that so either do we do we want to do we do we feel that this community will benefit from preserving the m11 and if we feel it's that 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 is a value to us to the community under what circumstances would we want to give it up and um you know i my sense here is we'd be giving it up here for something that will certainly be more profitable to the landlord. Um, I don't, I don't know that this is enough benefit to the community to to warrant letting go of of uh, the little manufacturing we have. And I was a little surprised that when I went down there. Um, because it, it's really a bustling commercial kind of light industrial commercial area. I, um, 
I think that one thing I can say is if you look at the zoning, I mean, if you look at the size of the manufacturing, you'll see that the frontages are 125, 50. There's nothing that's 25 feet uh, anywhere. Uh, you have uh, 195, you have large 175, 275. You have really large manufacturing uh, buildings that are across the street and are on the block. And I can understand what you're saying that you want to preserve manufacturing, but this building is really not appropriate, in my opinion, at 25 uh, by 100 for a manufacturing use when you have these much, much larger buildings that are more far more capable of uh, putting in loading docks or freight elevators as renovations. Um, and I think that actually it would be beneficial. I, I don't think that the, um, the building that's the rent stabilized is a um, is a, a a very old building. Um, the and I think that the other buildings that are manufacturing are definitely appropriate for um, because of their large size. They can handle the ma modern manufacturing. A building 25 by 100 in many communities, in Dumbo, in, in various other communities, is just not uh, viable. If you go to DeVoe, you'll see the buildings are all 25 by 100. If you go, uh, if, you, if you continue to go to the west, you're going to find lots and lots of 25 by 100 buildings that are. Um, that you know that will will provide housing and, and housing is really needed in, the, in in this community and in other communities and I think that it's a very reasonable uh, it's a reasonable site it's a reasonable rental it's uh, um, I think the, the landlord uh, you know did not buy it to make a huge profit. He is not going to be making a huge profit, but he tried to, he's been uh, advertising it. Nobody has had any interest in it. And that's why he went to the BSA to ask to match the residential buildings that were uh, adjacent on both sides and to the north so that he could fill in the, the gap tooth with a, an Basically, uh, it's Jimmy. market rent, but it's an affordable market rent building. It, it is a it is a more affordable uh, rent than we see in many other places. Again, um, it's I think, you know, the, the issue we're dealing with here is whether how um, important or how precious is uh, the, uh, the 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 M one one zoning uh, to the community. Um, Dante, did you say you wanted to say something? Yes, I'd love to. If, um, if I'm not interrupting you when you're ready. I'm not interrupting me. Not okay. interrupting me. Okay, Miss Simon, I unfortunately I wish I didn't know very well uh, uh, not only 957 uh, Grand Street, but also 561 uh, Grand, also 344 Divorce Street. I wish I didn't know the original owner of all those three properties, uh, Florin Carmocano, which had the company uh, was doing business as uh, Ameron. They actually manufacture uh, stuff for me in the past. Uh, I believe he retired now. Uh, he states in his uh, LinkedIn uh, American dream achieved. And in 2019, uh, I put a link before it's a uh, Corcoran uh, real estate and the website. Uh, the property has been sold at uh, 961 uh, Grand Street, of which this property, together with this, the flooring Carpocano, as uh, Robert Solano has said, sold for a modest amount of money 
I don't know too if it's another family member because many family members were listed in this property uh, mm -hmm. for three hundred and fifty thousand dollars, which is, is seems to me is below even in two thousand thirteen below market value for the lot. But most important. Uh, because it seems this is misleading, and I believe this committee is very knowledgeable about not only our community, uh, but also about the zoning and what industrial zoning are. I myself uh, just uh, one block away. I've been in the, around that block for about 15 years. I rented, I didn't own a space, but I rented an industrial space for about 15 years, an M1 one space very valuable has gave me tremendous opportunity and uh, and so space of 2000 square feet that can be built on the entire lot can be uh, built for a certain number of floor they are extremely valuable and they don't need loading docks there is so many a variety of uh, business that are non necessary classified as industrial business but they need an industrial zoning and especially they need the buffer zoning the transition from the residential into the m3 one m3 zoning uh, just uh, uh, two blocks away down on grand and and morgan and vanderbilt uh, uh, so this lot had a function this lot actually was used for the delivery this lot was used together with the 961 and 344 devolve which has double entrance and i invite you uh, committee member to click in the link uh, that I put in the chat just at the beginning of the meeting of Corcoran to see, and this is something that is going to come again, is just next door. So the building is going to come next soon to our committee for some kind of rezoning, but that was an active industrial zone. You can see the picture in the Corcoran link of how the industrial space from the vault to up to 561 and includes also the 957 lot, which was used by Ameron for delivery for outdoor fabrication and, and Florin Carmocano uh, knew very well. And those three lots function all together. I wish Carmocano have, uh, have not sold the lot separately because you know, there was maybe need some cash, whatever. I wish you were combined together with all the property because the lot was meant probably to be together with the 561 and with a 344 Devo. But because of speculation has been broken down. And, and I believe uh, for $350,000, there is so many things that still can be very profitable. And honestly, as a, a committee member of, of this committee, I do not care about that. I care about uh, uh, that M11 zoning is extremely valuable for the community. And honestly, I don't even put that behind even the need for an affordable house because there is a reason if we have an M11 zoning, which we don't have it anymore. And this committee has seen so many applications these last couple of months in a 500 foot radius from this uh, amulet of industrial zoning is left in the community. They, they want to obliterate M11. Personally, I'm against, but I want to tell the story because I wish I didn't know the people that own it, the business that were run there, how those, lo this lot and the property from Vivo and 561 and 961 Grand function all together. Now they split it because of speculation. Well, that's their business. I don't think it's our business to allow them to make more money or to make more profit at the, and the, at the residential, they're not appropriate. The lot is an M11 zoning. And, and honestly, historically, those industrial zoning always have been a sort of a mix uh, uh, compound of residential and, and the historic fabric tells ourselves that that's the history. They always been together. Now we want to say they have to be all residential, but predominantly are industrial. I invite you, committee member, to go, and also Miss Miss Simon. I invite you to go, uh, probably on site, and go in the Google Map, and also visit the link from Corcoran that I put in the chat because you see how the factory was active and very well functioned together. And the building it seems to be residential and 961 just next in that door. That was the office of the, uh, of the, the fabrication business that was occupying even 957 grand. 
That's what they okay. It was it looks residential. It was a part of that industrial building with different uses, with office, even with well, the gym downstairs. I know what you're talking about because I did the research. 961 is, is residential. It's been residential for almost 100 years. Um, it is attached for some peculiar reason to the building on DeVoe, but the that small building on 961 has been residential. Um, I am not in disagreement with you about preserving our manufacturing in New York City. Um, in fact, when I was at City Planning, I was a tremendous advocate for preserving manufacturing in the city because I think it's something that's desperately needed. And um, as you know, the areas in Red Hook, all over New York City, all the M1 ones are being rezoned to, uh, to um, and city planning has been allowing the rezonings um, to uh, residential use because uh, because you get a better uh, you get a better return from a residential use. Uh, can, I, we we understand you get a better return. I mean that that goes without saying. That's that's why the the uh, owner is is making this application. Um, the question we have to answer is how, whether we want to give up yet another M11 site. I, I will say that um, there have been times when uh, recently we had an application with, for a residential building where literally everything in that whole area, anywhere near the, 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 the lot was residential. There was no commercial or manufacturing right in, in the vicinity of that building, and we did, we did um, get some, con, you know, um, some conditions uh, for lower rents from the landlord, and we reluctantly agreed to have the rezoning. I, I will say this is, uh, if you go down to that area, this is not that kind of an area. So I think somebody else might want to say something. Oh. Did you have your, were you um, raising your hand? Yeah, thank you, Del. Um, so I am also familiar with the area and it um, is pretty mixed. And also once you hit Morgan, it's absolutely industrial. Um, so, you know, I think there's a couple of things at play, most of which has already been said by you guys. Um, but one thing I wanted to note from a real estate perspective and, and Del just said it, which is obvious that residential values are higher. Um, and in order for us to keep any level of commercial space, those values need to be lower. And so I think, you know, Rob, who's nodding his head, said this earlier, but, you know, since the owner of the site bought it in 2013 um, for 350,000, which, you know, is very, very, very low for, what is it, a 25 by, I don't know, 75, 25 by 100 lot, that's extremely cheap. So I think that in order for us to even have industrial spaces, we need the market to dictate what an industrial space can, you know, afford in order to exist. And so if we allow for rezonings, even if the site is small, I think that, you know, th that's the onus on the purchaser to assess whether or not that purchase make sense for the zoning and i think you know, because this is as mentioned happening all over the city you know this board and i would imagine many others across the city are looking at it and saying hey wait a second like we want to have some industry and it is the onus is on the purchaser to make a purchase that has a balance sheet that makes sense for the zoning but also i think that you know, it's a greater question for us. It's a greater question of what do we want the end of metropolitan and grand to look like? Do we want to keep that commercial space? And if we do, then we have to dig our heels in, even if it's at the expense of this particular owner who may not be able to make a profit on it. Um, but in order to keep the land values at a level at which we can do commercial in the city, then I think that's what needs to happen. Well. Yeah. I mean, in respect, and respect. I have to let some 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 of the other board members speak. Okay. May I speak? Yeah, the committee members speak. I'm sorry. May I, may I speak, Dale? William Vega. Yes, of course. It's just that is that you know, Metropolitan and Morgan. Um, this is the history of being industry. That's what they invented, air conditioning. 
Uh, the name of the company was Carrier. They were a printing company, and because of they did high end um, printing during oh. the summer months, their paper were fold or you know just etc. So these wonderful book and nights created a way to keep that work area cool, and that became air conditioning. I'm just saying that is the history of this area, industrial nova, uh, innovation. I mean, and we're still doing it here in North Brooklyn. So, um, I, yeah, that is industrial. That's what I have to say. Thank you. I will. Man, that was a really good fact. That was really good. I don't know. They didn't want. I was pretty happy. That, William, were you around when that happened? When the air conditioner and you were around and they showed you the air conditioner? No, I just <laughs> like to read up on our neighborhood and I'm always impressed. Like Cooper's Park, that was the glue factory for Cooper. Uh, pencils, porcelain, you name it. That it's one. done yeah. here in Williamsburg and Greenpoint. Wow. I'm just saying that area, I also, since I, I was going to bring up to Dell, maybe we should get a lamb or, uh, you know, plaque put in there because, you know, after this heat wave we're hoeing, I think there should be a, a recognition of that. But I, again, this is getting off topic. But, you know, I encourage I everybody think to I think more of topic, our history. William. You're on topic. I think you're on topic, man. That yeah, is yeah. a great. I'm going to stop talking. That was a great. Yeah. Wait, Katie, Katie, Ms. Napolitarski, you've had your hand raised for a while here. I agree with what Sante said, Corey said, Rob said. Uh, <clears throat> the only thing I'd like to add is uh, not that it's kind of a moot point, but if it's not what was proposed is not guaranteed affordable and it's not guaranteed that it would be 600, 1600 either. I just want to add that. Um, I also want to reiterate that this is light manufacturing, not manufacturing, not heavy manufacturing industry. Um, and also just to say, as Corey said, we need to preserve this cluster of manufacturing. And so we cannot set a precedent by um, turning this into um, well, and I, and I, I agree with everything else everybody of uh, the community said so well. I think that I see where the land use, but you do realize that I am not asking for a rezoning. The M11 will stay, the M12 will stay. It will not be, there is, uh, you know, that is not going to be changed. The only thing that's going to be changed is this one small site. To make it residential to match the air, the buildings that are right near it um, and north of it and growing east of it. South of it, there is some residential um, and the M12s, the, the buildings are much, much larger. There's no way that I am asking, and I don't believe that we should lose manufacturing. There, there is not, this is not a request for a rezoning. This is a request for just a variance on this small building in order to uh, not just uh, to give the landlord a, a windfall, but to, to basically to fill in an area that is not been, nobody has had any interest in making, the, in purchasing this for manufacturing use, for adding it to, um, I guess it's 350 DeVoe um, that you were talking about um, that belong to the family that's no longer there. But um, I think that that this is a very reasonable use for this one site. Um, I don't think you're really losing your manufacturing in your M11 and certainly not in your M12 across the street. Uh, I think I would wish that the committee would really take a look at what makes sense in this line of buildings and to put a manufacturing building in the middle of one, two, three, four, five, six residential buildings just doesn't make sense at this point. But, but, Go on record because this is recorded just to say that I do believe that there is light manufacturing, which would be valuable, useful, and doable within this site. Um, and I, I think that that's probably, I just want to counter that with my own opinion. Mm -hmm. um, so. Also, I, I, um, I have a you know, conspiracy theory is that, say, you know, this variance was granted 
and then you have 961, which is connected to a very large, to much larger lot at 350. That um, 350, 961 will seek a variance, and they can build a really nice big uh, market rate uh, complex on uh, 350 Devo, and then you know there you go, you know just kind of. Well, 955 and 951 are far more recent conversions that were done. Uh, to permit residential use in these small areas. Um, the, the 961 is a very, very old building. All of these buildings are 100 years old, at least, and we're all manufacturing for over 100 years. So it's not as if they were newly introduced into, the na into this neighborhood. Um, then, and you know, I can see the way the community is moving, and it 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 makes me unhappy. Um, I think that uh, the M12, the M11s that are there, that are large, that are capable of even man light manufacturing, um, will stay. Then nothing's going to change. This is just one building that has not been able to be sold for either light manufacturing or any other kind of use. Um, and that is why the uh, owner came to me to get a variance, not a rezoning of any of the area so that um, the vacant parcel could be filled in and we could have some, uh, basically, uh, we're not talking about uh, but for reasonably affordable housing uh, in eight in eight units, and um, I would I would like you to I, I mean I can see the way you're moving, but I would really like you to think about um, I'm not asking to change the M11 or the M12. They're there, they're large, they belong there. I don't think that at 957 a manufacturing building in the middle of one, two, three, four, five, six, residential, all the entire corner basically of, of Catherine Grand and DeVoe is, and part of DeVoe is residential. When you get above DeVoe, um, between DeVoe and Metropolitan north of Catherine, you're all residential. When you cross the street, you're all residential. And Madam I Chair, don't think- Ma okay. Madam, Madam Chair. Uh, yeah. Th this selective viewing of maps is is not appropriate if you look to the right and anyone in this call we live here so you doing the visual for we all walk that and drive our cars through that that is heavily manufacturing the entire area around it so this like runoff of like resi 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 i can go to the right and go commercial 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 all the way to the bridge so I, 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 let me finish, please, because sure. because to just keep hitting me with selective facts mm -hmm. is not accurate, right? You have commercial, a, a little resi, a, res, a rent stabilized building, a rent stabilized building, uh, a smaller commercial, then a lot, then a lot, then a lot. If you look at the sequence, you were supposed to be a lot because you are a lot. If you look at the sequence of lot, 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 resi, resi, lot, 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 resi, lot you were supposed to be a lot, you're a lot. So it is not our fault that you now have to go to the BSA, explain hardship. I don't know how you explain hardship. You didn't buy the lot for a million dollars. You bought the lot very low. If you do apples to apples, you could rent that lot and make a modest return on a lot. Right across the street, there's three other garages that have similar sizes to this lot that are thriving and that are working. Are they making millions of dollars? No, they have jobs that provide manufacturing jobs or provide workforce for the community that they work. That's as simple as the way it works. Not every site is supposed to make you a millionaire. You have to go to work, you have to work really hard and you have to provide jobs for the community. This site is not a hardship site. You bought it really low. I do not see the, 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 the value for the community and for you to continue to run off, oh, it's res residential. I don't think anyone in this call is going to believe that this site is, is surrounded by residential. 
It's yeah. surrounded can, I com by can I compliment uh, Robert's uh, comment? Because I wait, tried I, to say... Wait, wait, wait. Michael Watchgood hasn't spoken and he just raised his hand. Oh, I apologize. I apologize. I apologize. I just wanted to say that. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. Thank you, Rob. So a uh, question for the applicant. What was the subject property? What was it last used for actively? What was its last active use? It, uh, for uh, almost 100 years, it was used as residential. There was a house there? Yes. There was a four story building. It was demolished. The, the, it, it was part of a set of residential buildings. It has been traditionally for over 100 years residential. Okay. I'm not trying to. Why did you choose to demolish it? It was unsafe. And they demolished it. How long ago? Uh, I th believe it was sometime between 1981 and 1982. The building was uh, was was demolished. But before that, for almost a hundred years, it had been part of a residential group. So since yeah. since 82, has it been? Was it a parking lot? What is it? Has it been used as? It hasn't been used as anything. Just bacon dirt. That's not true, Michael. That's not true. I, I, Santi just said I, it was useful. I, but I don't know. I said that I gave a particular history. I said three four four divo, nine sixty one grand, and nine five seven grand were owned by Florin Carmelcano, the ran a business uh, uh, as Ameron. The space was used actually for delivery, for fabrication, to park their truck, and to complement what Robert Solano just said. The lot was a lot because the lot are accessory to manufacturing. You know, you have vehicle, you have delivery, you have like steel in the case, make somebody else could have other material, maybe even more beneficial to have an open space than not to have an indoor space. So he was complementing the industrial, being an industrial lot still could be important in the future if hopefully somebody is not going to seek for a rezoning or for some variance and 961 grand as i'm assuming they will do may become very feasible for a property that still could operate as an m11 as an m12 because they could provide a lot it is actually it's a communicated lot with the back of Devo street uh, that's what i uh, what i feel but we stay here for hours uh, talking again about you know something that I guess we're saying the same thing over and over. Trina, I have a question. Um, you said that the owner had been trying to sell it unsuccessfully as um, as it's manufacturing. Is the owner looking for the variance and then he's going to sell it, or is the owner looking to develop it himself? No, the owner is developing it himself. And would he consider working with HPD and making it permanently affordable? Instead of just saying that he will make that he's going to offer affordable rents, would he actually work with with the city and turn it into actual affordable housing? Well, I certainly can speak with him about that. That's all. Do we um? Are there any more questions? Because we have to then end this public hearing and then we have to have our committee meeting and come up with a recommendation. Um, Jerry, uh, apparently no one else has from the com community has signed up to speak. Is that right? I see no one in the uh, in the chat or the participants that uh, requested to speak. No. So, um, perhaps we can. Um, perhaps we can, you know, end the uh, public hearing at this point, if there are no objections, and then we can just start our committee meeting. Now, I I'm second that. Okay. Yes, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, I'm not permitted. If you committee meeting, I have to leave, right? Do we have quorum? No, uh, yeah. no, you don't have to leave. Oh, okay. the committee meeting is always open to, to the public. Okay. Well, do we um, have quorum? I think so. We have had, as far as I know, we have quorum. We did. We've had it up till now. Okay. In the event that I get cut off, because I'm, I have 17% and I'm on the road. Okay. Do you have time. any thoughts about this, Maria? 
listen, my thoughts are that they knew what they were doing when they bought it. I guess they had a long-term vision. And they felt that they could come at some point to request exactly what's being requested. So it's either up to the community board now to decide that they want to give them a pass or not. Why don't we, um, Jerry, do we have to do another roll call for, to convert to the committee meeting? Uh, you don't have to. I mean, it, I'm looking at the screen. It looks like everyone's still here. Why don't we it's, just it's, do that then? It's up to you I, if you like. No, because I, I don't want to lose Maria <laughs> if, if I can keep her. All right, here we go. This is now the committee meeting. Um, are we, I, I think that the majority of people who have spoken are in favor of uh, rejecting the application um, because of the need to preserve our, our manufacturing. Trina, you did raise the, the question of whether they would work with HBD to convert it to uh, permanently affordable, of course, that's where this is on a clock. Um, I mean, I'm wondering, do we want to? It seems to me that the majority of people here are, are in, in favor of rejecting. Um, I mean, I suppose I don't know if anybody would be interested in rejecting the application, um, but being willing to reconsider if they were to work with HPD to, to uh, convert it to perm permanently affordable, but I don't know that that's really workable or doable, especially since this is on a clock. And I don't know that even at that, we want to give up the manufacturing um, classification. Uh, it just seems to me that, that we've commit, this committee has committed to trying to preserve what little like manufacturing we have. So, um, may I state, speak, Dale? Yes, of course. If the applicant had come to us and told us they're going to work with HPD from the initial, then I would be think rethinking about this. But um, had to be brought up by Trina. I'm, I'm, I vote to reject because we have to protect the little light manufacturing we have. Thank you. I second the motion from William Baker. Okay, so let's vote. Roll also, call. Vote. Just to just to say that I just checked uh, some of the tax uh, block uh, photo in 1981. It was an empty lot. I can check the 1940 photo to see if it was an empty lot in 1940. So you know, just to have a little bit more uh, knowledge. Thank you. Motion on the floor. Okay, so let's start voting. Um, the motion is to uh, to deny the application and. Um, Jerry, would you do a roll call vote? Sure. LT. Um, okay, so we're voting to deny. And so, are we adding and to preserve the industrial uh, zoning of that uh, cluster a motion. for the future? It, well, that, the it's not a rezoning. To, that's what we're voting on. The motion is to deny the application to convert it to, to you know, from M11 to R6. So. No, it's not a conversion. No. It's just a variance. It's a variance. Yeah. It's a variance. The motion is the to deny zoning. The, you're right. The motion is to deny the variance. A yes is to deny. So, so a yes means we're denying. So I, I vote yes. Maria Vieira? Yes. Trina McKeever? Yes. Gina Barros? Stephen Chesler? Yes. Aaron Drinkwater? Moisha Indig, Ozana Kamensky, Abraham Leibovitz, Sante Maselli. Yes. Rabbi Niedemann. Yes. Isaac Sofer. Yes. Robert Solano. Yes. William yes. Vega. Yes. Stephen Weidberg. Yes. Simon Weiser. Yes. Michael Andrews. Yes. Keith Berger. Corey Canton. Yes. Corey Canton. He said yes. Yes. Okay, thank you. Michael Kowachka. Yes. 
Kate Naplikarski. Yes. Allison Stone. Fifteen in the affirmative, zero, no, zero abstention. Motion carries. So thank you, everybody. Uh really you just the best. Um so I guess we'll see each other on uh, the twelfth. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye. 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 B